And greetings everybody and welcome to another Jester Reviews and today I'd like to bring you the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought T6X so let's have a quick look at her shall we on the outside yes she definitely looks like a time ship uh, but she doesn't have any temporal seating so yes now I have actually picked this ship up because um, I'm wanting to um, have a little go at some science builds. Uh, unfortunately, I've made a dreadful mistake because I've actually purchased this ship on my engineering tune. So that wasn't very wise of me, was it, really? Uh, but anyway, the deed is done. Um, so we're going to try and make the best of a bad job, I'm afraid, but uh, never mind. So as you can see, she is quite a formidable ship. She's quite large. And yeah, she is a little bit slow. Oh, there we have a, a Husnock ship just below us. Look. So in comparison, you can see yeah, just how big she actually is. Um, yeah, lots of uh, windows there. Can you see in between there? Yeah, really good effects. Um, yeah, I've been hearing a lot about this ship, and I decided, well, if I'm going to have a go at some science builds, then this would be the best ship to use. So, um, this ship is either 900 and low buy, um, or you can purchase it on the exchange, if there is one available. I, I actually picked this up off the exchange for an eye-watering amount of money. Uh, not money, EC rather. Um... Yes, and let's not get me started on EC inflation, shall we? Because it's uh, it's going absolutely mental at the moment on the exchange. But uh, yeah, there are still deals to be found if you're willing to search for them. So let's briefly take a look at the statistics of this ship, shall we? So here we are. Um, at level 65, we have a hull of 56,250. We have a hull modifier of... 1.25 and we have a shield modifier of 1.4 which that's not too bad actually I'm, I can live with that if we have a turn rate of 8 and we have an impulse modifier of 0.15 an inertia rating of 40 you get a bonus power of plus 10 shield power and plus 10 auxiliary power consoles include three tactical three engineering and five science with one hangar bay uh, its abilities include temporal distortions, we can launch Aeon time ships, carrier commands, sensor analysis, and subsystem targeting. I never pronounce that right, do I? Subsystem targeting. There you go. Uh, the Admiralty cards are 34 engineering, 32 tactical, and 60 science. Right, for those of you who are interested, this ship comes with uh, various colors uh, and I'll just go through them for you uh, yeah that's the Klein Mobius Terran yeah, I must admit I'm not keen on any of these type 1 Do you know I quite I quite like that one actually quite like that one type 1 uh, type 2 yeah that's not bad either. Um, type 3. Type 4. 5. Type 
six. Well, that's a bit bright, isn't it? Seven. Gives it a little bit more of a tatty look. And I think this is my favourite. Yes, this one. I do like this one. Gives it a nice silver effect. Enhanced. Well, that's quite nice, isn't it? I wonder if we go to a nice, uh, a nice soft blue. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, quite like that. Yeah, quite like that. So we'll stick with that one. Uh, now, I've actually forgotten, uh, I should mention this, um, I do actually own uh, the Mobius and some of the other time ships, and I think some of these colours, these materials, are actually linked to those ships as well. I can't be sure about that, but... Um, I'll look further into that and I'll uh, I'll let you know below if there's any different but I do think that uh, some of these materials are dependent on you owning the other time ships um, and I do own the Mobius so I think this is why it's allowing us to have this color now there is also um, the fighters you can get the Aeon fighters from the Lobby store for 300 low buy and if you do pick them up you can use them with the ship and that actually opens up another skin uh, not a skin another material so you can actually use that as well um i believe it's like a dark colored uh skin but uh yeah i'm, I'm not going to spend 300 low buy on some fighters um well i haven't got it to be honest with you but um I'll, I'll consider it. There you go. You persuaded me. You persuaded me. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. Right. So let's uh, take a look at some of the statistics, shall we? And uh, the traits and the build. Right. So here is the build. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, on this build. I'll leave it on the screen while I just cover some of the main points uh, i'm very much aware that uh, my videos can go on for a bit of a long time and uh, yeah i'm trying to cut down the time so i'll keep this brief and just point out some of the um, weapons and uh, consoles that uh, which i think you should know about so this is a four weapons to the front and three weapons to the rear uh, ship we have the advanced radiant anti-proton dual heavy cannons to the front Yes, I know that's a rather unusual weapon to put on, but I'm going to give it a try. And this gives us a 2% bonus all damage. I'm also using the Hyper Dual Refracting Antiproton Beam Bank. And that also gives us a 2% bonus all damage. That is actually part of a three-piece set, but I've only, I'm only using this uh, for now. I'm using the Cronton Dual Beam Bank. Uh, this is part of a two-piece set with the tachyokinetic converter. And the two-piece set is giving us... Let's have a look. Where are we? Uh, plus 34.2% chronoton projectile weapon damage. Hmm. Which makes me wonder whether I should put a chronoton weapon on there. Do I have one? Is that a chronoton? It is. I think we'll put that on there actually. Yes, okay. That's chronoton based, isn't it? Yeah, it is. so we'll put that on there and see how we go. Um, I'm also running the advanced radion, ra radiant, radiant anti proton beam, and that's giving us a plus 2% bonus all damage. 
I'm going to skip the deflector, secondary deflector, impulse warp and shields because some of these are, you know, I feature these every um, every review. So you should know what these are by now. So I'm not going to go into them um, at this moment. Um, omnidirectional antiproton, again, 2% uh, bonus all damage. Advanced temporal defense chronoton torpedo launcher, and that's giving me a 2% bonus all damage. And finally, the Advanced Thoron Infused Anti-Proton Beam Array, and that's giving us another 2% bonus all damage. So if you can, um, bonus all damage is quite important to these builds, uh, if you want to pack a bit of a punch. And uh, I've noticed a significant difference in my build since I've been selecting bonus all damage weapons. But anyhow, that's, that's just me. Now the console that comes with this ship is the Universal Temporal Rift Stabilizer. Now I do have the uh, Mannheim device as well, which is part of the two-piece set. Um, and the two-piece set... It's actually a three-piece set, but I've only got two. Uh, anyway, adds fragment time to tipler rewind time ability all nearby foes become held and untargetable now i don't have the third piece of that set i thought i did i thought i had that ship but i, I don't think I have. I'm, I'm still convinced i have it but um unless it's on another character but i'm sure i have seen the tipler cylinder so anyhow but i don't have it on this character so once i get that the third console um, I'll pop this on uh, so the temporal rift stabilizer uh, temporal distortion affects up to 10 foes in a 1.5 kilometer radiant uh, foe 196.1 kinetic damage per not point half a second ignore shields reduces damage by 50% for three seconds uh, that's your foe and your foe reduces its turn rate by 85.7 percent three seconds and reduces impulse speed by 73.2 percent for three seconds right so um that's that um now the fighters the elite aeon time ships now just as a useless piece of information here if any of you remember the voyager episode with Captain Braxton this was the ship he used so if you do go to the lobby store and you pick up the uh, hangar elite Aeon time ships they are slightly better than this one as I say it's 300 low buy and I can think of better things to do with my low buy at this moment in time unless I wait for a sale anyhow there you go moving on um, the traits Tier 1, 15% damage to exotic damage abilities. Tier 2, increased maximum shield hit points, plus 10%. Tier 3, we have 10% uh, hull healing abilities and shield healing abilities. That wasn't easy to say, was it? Anyway, moving on. Tier 4, improved shield regeneration and hardness. 875.7 shield regeneration every six seconds and 5% shield resistance. Now the trait, gravity well, tank and rift, chronometric inversion field. They don't make these words small, do they? You know, chronometric inversion field. Uh, and time ship collapse, explode and reduce accuracy and damage. This applies to foes within five kilometers 4,961.2 kinetic damage, minus 20 accuracy rating, and minus 28.6 all damage. Alright, so there you go. So, the statistics. Um, we have a hull, 112,469. That's not too bad. Four rear, right, and left shields. 33. 1,388 and it'll say 33,000 then. Uh, the resists quite healthy mid 45 apart from the kinetic resist 37.2 and we are a little bit vulnerable to radiation as we're only at 32.3. 
The accuracy rating is 79 and the critical chance is 29.3% and the critical severity is 195.6. Right. So there you go. She's a very good looking ship, I think. I, I do like this ship. Um, I like quirky. And this is very quirky. Um, this is far better looking to me than the other time ships that I have. Um, for some reason, it just looks futuristic. It really does look the part to me. Um, apart from it being slow, which I am working on. I think it looks uh, really, really cool. I really like it. Anyhow, let's uh, go visit the bridge because it does come with the standard timeship bridge. And uh, yeah, we'll see how the crew is getting on, shall we? So here we are on the bridge. Um, this is the standard bridge that uh, comes with this ship. And as you can see, this was one that also featured on Voyager. Yes, that was the one where, uh, I think it's the second one, where Seven of Nine was chasing Captain Braxton all over Voyager at one point. Yeah, it turns out he was trying to sabotage the ship and he was leading the fight to stop himself. I don't know how that worked, actually, but uh, anyhow, there you go. So, uh, right, so let's move on to the stations. We have, uh, this is the bank. And uh, moving on down here. You have access to the library files and duty officers. And uh, oh, huh, there we go, Mr. Uh, Mr. Potato Head. Uh, now then, Mr. Potato Head, how are you? What do you mean you like sushi? Oh, well, that's very good. But but how are you? With with potatoes. Uh, I think there's something. Are you all right, Mr. Potato Head? You're going to hold a marathon. Uh, right, okay. Uh, just bear with me. Uh, number one, I think we need to relieve Mr. Potato Head. He's gone completely bonkers. Is what? Is Universal Translators offline? Ah. Ah, right, okay. I thought, I thought he'd gone completely mad then. Right, okay. Yes, don't worry, uh, Mr. Potato Head. We'll get your Universal Translator sorted out. You like your pyjamas. Right, well, okay. Uh, yes, well. Confused.com. Right, uh, let's have a look. Um, hello, crewman. Ready for action, I can see. Dressed in your Mako kit. Ready to go. Yes, some sort of Section 31 time mission, I believe you're on. You can't talk about it. But but I am the captain. You can't talk. Well, I'm not going to argue because I've been here before. I never win. I never win. Right. Okay. So can you get off this ship? Uh, no, you can't. Right. So uh, there we go. Nice little viewing screen there. I do like that look. As you move around the viewing screen, you can actually... It moves with it. I don't quite like that. That's not static. Right, well, there's not much else to see, really. We have a, a temporal beaming in and beaming out station. Steps. Yeah, that would have been better as a screen, wouldn't it, there? But, uh, anyhow, for monitoring the temporal uh, anomalies. Right, well, there's not much to see here, and you can't get off. But I do like the design. It's really, really nice. Uh, even though it is a standard uh, time bridge, it is nice to have a different type of bridge rather than that horrible, cheap, nasty one that they keep putting out with uh, lobby ships, which I'm not very keen on. But uh, anyhow, right. So, um, Mr. Potato Head, don't worry. We'll get your Universal Translator sorted out. What do you mean you mix it with pastry? Right, okay. Uh, no more. Can we get this Universal Translator sorted out? This is getting highly confusing. Right, so, um, with that, let's take her into the field and uh, see how she performs, shall we? 
So here we are. Beta Therador. Let's take on some Klingons. Mr. Potato Head. Arm all weapons. What do you mean you'll have pizza and fries? Let's take out some of these Klingons. What do you think of these new explosions as well? I, I, I don't mind them actually. They killed all these things. Let's see them, is it? So, it's like a temporal distortion. Um, but well it was all over before it began wasn't it oh that was a decent explosion actually I do quite like those explosions now the uh, explosion effects well, I think as that was over quite quickly, I think what we'll do now is, um, I think we'll do a quick Borg TFO. So, hold on to your hats. So, here we go. Let's get into these Borgs, shall we? have a go with this are we there we go well there we go that was over quickly as well well I was quite impressed with her there to be honest with you she got into the thick of things and um, she was very tanky um, which isn't bad considering that I really haven't paid any attention to uh, the build as such, um, with science ships, I've, I've no idea what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, I mean, just look at these effects here. I really do. Ooh, that was a, a fairly decent explosion, wasn't it? Excellent stuff. Right, well, I, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review of the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought. Um, I would actually recommend this ship if you're uh, into science builds. In fact, I think it makes a decent tank as well, to be honest with you. But uh, 
I wouldn't know. I'm not. I'm not much into tanks, but um, yeah, I do like ships that move quickly, though. That's that's uh, that's that's my problem. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with this. Um, it's a really really cool ship. I really do like it. Right. So without further ado, uh, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if uh, if you haven't already done so. And uh, yeah, a like would be good. If uh, you've enjoyed what you've seen today, um, yeah, really nice ship. This I, I'm not going to get tired of looking at it. To be honest with you, I like the I like the style. I like the design. Really cool. Right. So until next time, this is Jester signing off. Uh, Mr. Potato Head, uh, can you set a course for Earth Sol, please? What do you mean it's 1400 hours?